Bitcoin is pushing through $40,000 once again this morning. Elon Musk tweeted giving it a bit of fuel and billionaires and countries are all looking for exposure to Bitcoin. It seems that the news cycle is turning positive once again and so potentially is the chart. I'm going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart in depth and all the news driving markets today. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button down below so that you always see my videos, which come out multiple times a day. Now, listen, we're going to dive right into the chart and all of the news because there's so much happening with Bitcoin right now. It's nice to see a little volatility, nice to see a little push, and nice to see the news cycle finally turning a bit positive. So first, let's start on the weekly chart. The weekly candle closed last night, Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for me. As you can see, I've been talking about this for weeks. We had the massive drop here, but then we had these two candles that were kind of like inverted hammers. Now, when those are at the bottom, they're actually bullish. Even with that long wick up, it indicates that sellers are struggling to continue to push price down. Well, that was followed up last week by an actual hammer with a massive body, long wick down, green body, and closing almost at the highs of the entire week. That is a very bullish candle, a reverse signal. And now we need to see green follow through with a whole week still to go. So still too early to judge there. As you can see, very sloppy here, but I have a lot of Fibonacci levels. We have the levels pulled all the way down from the 3,800 March. That's these black ones. That was March 2020 when price went down to 3,800 all the way to the top at 65,000. All of them have that top. You can see that we have held one, two, three, four candles going below that 50% retracement level. Not a Fibonacci level, just a 50% level, which is common on all kinds of charts for a good bounce. All these candles, one, two, three, four, testing that level and closing above, that is bullish. On the red, you can see that's the move from 9,800 up to 65,000. We have held the golden pocket almost twice. This one, almost an exact 61.8% retracement. This one dipping into that golden pocket between 61.8% and 65%. That is when price generally reverses if it's going to continue to be a bull market. Also still continuing to trade above the 50 MA here on the weekly. And now I've pulled new fibs, these blue ones right now. That's the move from 64,899 all the way down to 30,000. And you can see we still have a long way to go. We haven't even made it to the 38.2. Even a move to the 50 or 61.8% could happen happen if the trend continues down that would put us between 47,000 and 51,567 as you know I continue talking about it but we really need to get above 42k for anything to matter if you are a TD sequential trader Tom to mark you can see that we have a rare buy nine on the weekly chart but you can also see they've failed in the past when we've had nines this is a 13 candle sequence we are only nine into it and this is an imperfect nine you would want it to actually close below at least the seventh, but you're judged by the four candles before it. So it's imperfect, but a signal a lot of people who trade with TV sequential will likely be watching. Let's move on to the daily chart. As you can see on the daily chart, as I told you, this was the bottom really when we had this bullish divergence here on MACD on the daily. MACD crossed bullish on the histogram and with the slower moving MA moving above the faster moving MA here on the daily. And now if you redrew this pendant as we did, remember it was originally here, it was redrawn here. We have a very clean breakout on yesterday's candle and today's candle is pushing. We do have the 50 and 200 MA. Everyone's talking about above the potential death cross, but you can see if we continue up, the 50 MA is flattening out and could turn up and avoid this death cross. And that's why you don't trade things before they happen. And death crosses are lagging indicators anyways. These MAs are reacting to what happened here. The 50 MA is going down because price went down. It's not predicting another move down. But we can expect those lines if you're an MA trader because of algorithms and trader price placing orders there that we could potentially see resistance. As you can see, 42K is still the key line. That is where the entire move from 20K ended. And it required Tesla's buy of $1.5 billion to eventually break that line. We broke below it. We need to get above that to start talking about anything bullish and start to really make higher highs here. But you could say that we have a low here, these highs low. So we really need to get back above this whole area, 42, 43, to make a higher high and think that we might be continuing up. Also on the daily, we had the bull div, hidden bear div, bull div, hidden bear div, bull div, hidden bear div, and now had another potential hidden bear div that will be invalidated by a close above 39,219, which would be great, really above 40,669. And that, that really uh, eliminates any chance of these hidden bear divs and makes these bull divs much, much more powerful. You can also see on RSI, we had a breakout of this descending resistance and almost a retest as support. That is usually a precursor to the same move on price. You can draw these patterns 
the same ones on your indicators as you do. And usually if they break out, you see price do the same. Drilling into the four hour chart, you can see we are finally reattacking this supply zone here, this blue one that I was talking about all the way back in May around the 25th. We hit it once, we hit it twice, we hit it three times with multiple candles each time and each time failed. Well, we flipped the EQ of the channel here on the four hour, flipped the 50 MA back again. You can see how much action there is at the EQ of this trading range. And now we are pushing through the 200 MA, trying to, who knows what will be happening by the time this comes out and through that blue zone. But ultimately we need to get above this range, which is above 43,000 and make higher highs as I talked about. But this is encouraging. We had this SFP here, we saw that, we called it, traded around here, consolidated, flipped, heading back up ultimately above this range and we start to look really, really, really good. Now on Friday during my live stream, I took a look at the Ichimoku cloud because I hadn't looked at it in a while, it was something that I trade with. Often the four hour was interesting, as I said. Well, now it's the 14th. That was back on the 11th. So we're looking at it here, and I was saying it's just entering the cloud. This is a good place for it to pass through. It's very thin. So yes, it lost the cloud temporarily, but we had this bullish TK. That's the Tenkin, the slower moving moving average, and the Kijun, the brown line there. That's the longer uh, moving average. That cross up is a sign to close your shorts if it's below the cloud. If it happens above the cloud, it means you go long. But we're closing our shorts. And you got back into the cloud, edge to edge, now trading above the cloud. And as you can see, we have a Kumo twist here. That's a cloud twist going to green. That is bullish. It's leaving red, going to green. We're trading above the cloud and the Tenkin and Kijun are both pointing up. If you're an Ichimoku trader and you like the four hour chart, this is very encouraging. So I would say at the very bottom line, we still need to get above 42K, really 43K to clear all of this resistance. But this is a nice push. We just want to see a hell of a lot more volume. Let's dig into the news now. Now, this one is a bit behind. Bitcoin eyes 40K as Musk says Tesla may use crypto in the future. Musk's latest tweet will put the juice to the upside. A market observer said, if you believe that Elon Musk drive the market, well, he had one yesterday, which we can dig into momentarily. But this is saying eyeing 40K and we're already above it. Here was the tweet that he said. It was in response to this criticism. Elon Musk is catching flack again, but what's it for this time? Signia CEO Magno Wierska lambasts him saying, what we have seen with Bitcoin is price manipulation by one very powerful and influential individual. Musk said, this is inaccurate. Tesla only sold 10% of holdings to confirm Bitcoin can be liquidated easily without moving market. When there's confirmation of reasonable, roughly 50%, clean energy usage by miners with positive future trend, Tesla will resume allowing Bitcoin transactions. Really, really interesting confirmation. They've only sold 10% still, even though he had the breakup Lincoln Park or whatever it was. In the end, it doesn't really matter. Meme uh, about a week and a half ago. And here it is. Tesla will resume taking Bitcoin as payment once miners go 50% green. Now, we've seen a lot of information that miners are 70% green. That's from a 2018 report. Not entirely accurate. What that really was at that time, and things have evolved tremendously, was that 70% use some type of renewable as part of the mining process. But we know it's about 40% that use entirely renewables. But that is growing. It will be over 50% very soon, especially if we start mining Bitcoin from Vol. Kanos. I think that uh, Elon Musk was hedging his bets here, but we know that eventually it's going to get above 50%, meaning Tesla will come back in and allow the seven people on planet Earth who would be dumb enough to buy a car with their Bitcoin to do so. Bitcoin at 200K by year's end. Some crypto options traders make that bet. The long-term bullish bet is akin to buying a lottery ticket. Absolutely true. This is on Deribit and they are pricing some futures options for December 31st of 2021 at 200,000. But it's interesting, 425 Bitcoin coin call option contracts with that strike price of 200,000 and an expiration date of December 31st did change hands on Thursday. Yes, it's a very cheap call option on a very large price, but it's interesting that there are obviously traders so bullish that they still believe we will hit 200k by the end of the year. Plan B also, thinking along those lines, 288k is still in play. It would really surprise me if Bitcoin would not touch the black stock to flow X model line this phase. Regardless of current volatility, yellow, green, and blue dots will be much higher than red. Orange dots were trading red. You can see the line here. That would put us very soon around 85,000 and with much higher prices if it follows the stock flow model. Good to know that the model is not broken and that we've seen action like this before. In macro news, the Federal Reserve balance sheet tops $8 trillion for the first time. It was, has doubled in a year. Absolutely absurd. The U.S. Central Bank will continue buying treasury and mortgage bonds to support the economy. You do not do that if you believe that the economy is healthy. 
This lets you know that the stock market pump stocks only go up. It's not real. It's market manipulation. It's completely central bank policy that fuels this growth. Inflation inflates the price of real assets like stocks, real estate, even potentially crypto, you could make the argument, at the expense of poor people who do not hold hard assets. They're going to just buy and print and buy and print endlessly. If you don't believe it, here is the assets on the Fed's balance sheet since 2002. Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely astounding how fast. And look what happened in 2020. It continues to trickle up. This is disgusting and it cannot end well. Tanzanian president urges central bank to prepare for crypto. Tanzania's president wants the country's central bank to begin exploring Bitcoin and digital assets. We've also seen huge moves in Nigeria. Russell Okung penned an amazing letter to the president of Nigeria saying that they need to go on a Bitcoin standard. And we have Ray Youssef from Paxful talking about the youth of Nigeria forming their entirely own monetary system outside of the governments. It seems that what's happening in Africa is just as big and probably was happening first as what happened in El Salvador and the push that we're seeing in Central and South America. The bottom line is that these smaller economies understand how important Bitcoin is and are starting to make a move in that direction. We even saw South Africa today say that they're going to regulate because there's so much consumer interest and demand. And moving on from countries to billionaires. Billionaire Alan Howard is making massive moves into crypto. The former fund manager has made at least nine investments in crypto-related businesses. Elwood, set up by Howard in 2018 as an asset manager, is pivoting to become a software business focused on crypto liquidity. Now, diving a bit more into this argument, let's talk about who he is. The 57-year-old rose to fame as co-founder and CEO of the hedge fund Brevin Howard. Formed in 2002, the company became one of the world's largest macro hedge funds with some $40 billion under management by 2013. Howard stepped down as CEO in November 2019, and here is a quick list of the over $1 billion of investments he has in nine different crypto things. This guy is going very, very heavily into crypto. December 2020, Bloomberg revealed Howard as a backer of One River Asset Management, a hedge fund specializing in volatility bets that had quietly bought more than $600 million in crypto. February 2021, Howard participated in a $15.5 million raise by British crypto payment startup BottlePay. March 2020, Howard led a $25 million raise by Kamenu, a Jersey-regulated crypto custodian set up by Nomura, Ledger, and CoinShares. Four, March 2021, Howard is the fourth largest shareholder in CoinShares, Europe's largest crypto asset manager. At that time, his shareholding was worth around $61.5 million. March 2021, Howard and fellow billionaire Christian Angermeyer, through his investment firm Cryptology Asset Group, led a $30 million Series B fundraise by Cologne-based Neo Broker Next Markets, which offers trading in stocks as well as cryptocurrencies. Six, May 2021, Block.1 unveiled plans for a new crypto exchange named Bullish Global, which claimed to be backed by $10 billion in funding. That headline figure included a $300 million strategic investment round, which Howard led alongside a number of other billionaires, including Angermeyer and the investment firms of Peter Thiel and Mike Novogratz. Seven, Howard participated in a $30 million raise by Canadian crypto lender LEDN in May 2020. Wow, he's been busy in 2020. Howard made a $4 million strategic investment in Hong Kong-based Kiki Trade on June 10th, 2021. On June 11th, Howard led a $25 million investment in Copper, the London-based crypto custodian, extending a $50 million Series B raise that was announced in May. This guy has been going absolutely nuts in the last three or four months investing in crypto. And to round it all off, once again, our good friend Paul Tudor wants to allocate 5% of his portfolio in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is math. He said in this interview with CNBC, I like the idea of investing in something reliable, honest, secure, and 100% certain. We love you, Paul Tudor Jones. We love your commitment to it. And it's great to understand mathematical scarcity and the importance of math. That is it for today. I am going to be live at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time looking at charts, probably the top 10 crypto. So you don't want to miss that. Go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter and check out everything I have going on in the description. Until later today, peace. Peace.